as you know that when we use the uh, chemotherapeutic agents, when we don't have any evidence of the disease, a, a patient having CA breast, she is having T1 tumor, and she has no lymph nodes. We said that if the tumor more than one centimeter, we give chemotherapy. Why to give chemotherapy? Because we may have uh, metastasis called micrometastasis in the lung or in the liver. So that we give chemotherapy without monitoring that if there is a response or not. We assume that there are micrometastasis and we assume that when we give chemotherapy, this will give a survival advantage to the patient. The chemotherapy can be used upfront chemotherapy or a new adjuvant chemotherapy. Is there any chemotherapy? Uh, for example, this patient, she's having a big tumor here. We can start giving chemotherapy in order, before surgery, in order to reduce the size of the tumor so that this patient, instead of doing mastectomy for her, we do wide local excision. And when the tumor is that big, it probably 50% of the, of the people we have distant metastasis, but undetectable. So that when we use chemotherapy from the start, we, we control distant or cause distant metastasis, we reduce the size of the tumor, we convert non-operable patient or patient needs mastectomy to patient needs a uh, smaller magnitude of uh, surgery. And one of the things that you have a measurable, you have a measurable evidence that there is a response. If you have a tube start with this tumor and get, you give chemotherapy and this tumor disappears, it means that there is a complete response to, the, to this chemotherapy. Suppose that you give chemotherapy and there is no change in this tumor or the tumor increase in size. Or while you are giving the tumor, there is a metastasis appeared uh, here or there. It means that there is no response to those people, uh, to, to, the, to this chemotherapy and probably we need to change the chemotherapy, probably we increase the dose, probably we change the frequency and so on. So that we have to make a step in order to make a response in those people. Otherwise, you will resort to no further local treatment like uh, surgery or radiotherapy. Now, uh, for the treatment of uh, distant metastasis, so that this patient had a breast problem, for example, and after a while, she developed metastasis in the lung. And this patient, she is candidate for a chemotherapy if she didn't take before. So that if she is chemotherapy naive, we will start chemotherapy. If she received chemotherapy in the past, and as part of this, she developed metastasis, we will get what's called second line chemotherapy. And you see that the tumor here, we started chemotherapy. One of the regions started to disappear. And here we have minimal appearance or remnant of, uh, of the tumor. And in this photo that there is no evidence of the tumor. Now, now, if this proved to be complete response, okay, it means that there is no evidence of the disease. So it means when we say that a chemotherapy given and there is a complete response, there should be no tumor uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the body. If this appears clinically, or by chest X-ray, or by CT scan, we say that this is a clinical and radiological complete response. But if we have the chance to take biopsy from this site, okay, and we send it to the pathology, uh, probably they will say that no evidence of tumor, probably they will say that there is a tumor. So that it means that there is a complete clinical response, but there is no complete pathological response. What is real, what is a fact is, uh, which make a difference and the, in the pattern of the disease is to have a complete pathological response. Sometimes, sometimes, if we uh, have a tumor, as I said before, if you know that most of the solid tumors, 40 or 50% of this tumor are composed of non-tumor tissue, okay? And when you use chemotherapy, those are not targeted. The non-tumor tissue is not targeted. It probably they will be reduced in amount or in size. And at the site of tumor, 
we may have a scar tissue, we call it a healed tumor, healed site of the tumor, so that probably we will find some abnormality by radiological appearance. And when we take biopsy from this abnormality, we may find no tumor cells. It means that if the tumor radiologically uh, present, it may be sterile. There may be no uh, tumor cells, but there is a, a, a residual effect of the previous or an exit tumor. So that presence radiologically, ab uh, radiological abnormality doesn't mean that there is no complete response. And absence of radiological abnormality doesn't mean that there is a, a, a complete response. Now we will go in a brief for the toxic side effects. You know that those are the targets of chemotherapy, normal tissue, the bone marrow, gastrointestinal tract, the ovaries, and the uh, hair. Uh, alopecia, alopecia is one of the bad things that the patient will have. And probably most of the people refrain from taking uh, chemotherapy because they don't like to be in this situation. However, uh, not, all of the, not all chemotherapeutic agents causing alopecia, but the majority do. And usually if the, uh, alope if the tumor uh, causing alopecia, it means that it is effective up to the level of the follicles of the scalp. Some people try to protect the uh, scalp from uh, the chemotherapy. They use tourniquet, for example. Or they may use a cold air, which at, at the time of chemotherapy, they will be exposed to cold air, so that this will cause vasoconstriction, so that this will reduce the amount of the drug goes to the scalp. Or they use what is called ice caps. Okay, an ice filled bag put on the uh, on the scalp at the time of chemotherapy. This again will reduce the uh, uh, the, the drug going to the scalp area. But one of the studies that did patients with leukemia and they use this modalities. Okay, they have a res complete response except in this area where they have lichemic nodules in, in, in the scalp. So that it's better when you need to, to treat, uh, treat it properly and try to overcome these social, social problems. Uh, there are many attempts in, in reducing this uh, phenomenon. For example, cutting of the hair very short so that the weak uh, hair follicle will not have heavy hair or heavy weight so that the effect of gravity is less so that it takes time to form. Then uh, also the scalp will be more sensitive. We can use uh, uh, shampoos designed for the pediatric age group. And the people should be uh, ready to use wigs before, and they can be ambulant. And, uh, sometimes in severe or in toxic doses or in, in heavy doses, not toxic doses, the, hair, the eyebrows also, uh, hair is but the, the positive thing about this is that it's a temporary event, okay? After finishing the chemotherapy, the uh, hair will regrow again. Also, the, second, the other problem is the nausea and vomiting. And the nausea and vomiting, it has three uh, things. There's a psychological uh, influence, and we said that this anti anticipation of the problem and vomiting. We observe that people the night before coming to the chemotherapy uh, administration, they will start to have nausea and vomiting. Sometimes when they go to the, when they come to the hospital, when they enter from the main gate, sometimes when they see uh, lab coats, white lab coats, sometimes when they smell the smell of the hospital, they start to vomit. So that there is a psychological event in this situation. Also, the chemotherapy are hematogenic. They affect the. Uh, vomiting center and trigger uh, zone in the brain and induce central stimulation to these areas and the patient will have vomiting. Also, the people have gastric upset. We said that the epithelium of gastrointestinal tract is shedding and there is a problem of infection and this may probably irritate the stomach and giving uh, uh, vomiting.
However, nowadays, as we said, we have many precautions. Many people, they use the night before dexamethasone or corticosteroids, and they use the uh, new modalities of uh, anti-emetic anti drugs, uh, plus minus. The bone marrow is insulted, and due to there is an effect on the platelets, which may lead to the bleeding tendency. The white cells will be knocked down, and the patient uh, more prone to infection. And red blood cells, the patient will be animate with fatigue and general tiredness. Now, the chemotherapy, when we start with chemotherapy, the blood elements start to, to be reduced within six or seven days after the, the start of chemotherapy. And this reduction will go to the bottom, it's the nagel effect, 10 to 14 days, okay? And the recovery will start after that. Within one week time, the patient's bone marrow elements will start to uh, recover, and he is due for the next course of chemotherapy. Now we have, we have uh, what's called the uh, colon stimulating factor, uh, granulocytes, or granulocytes, monocyte, colon stimulating factor can be given to improve the function of the bone marrow and to, um, to start uh, early recovery. And usually platelets, they will not be reduced to bleed to, to make the patient spontaneously bleed unless we give high doses of chemotherapy where the, the platelets will be knocked to very serious level. Also, the uh, anemia nowadays, the people use a common stimulating factor, which is the erythrobiotin, which improves the anemia in those people. Uh, the mouth ulcers also, those are a problem making the patient unable to eat. Uh, sometimes you need to use antifungal or antiviral treatment. Uh, those people with good hydration, good oral hygiene will, will overcome this problem. And usually, as we said, that upset in the shedding of the epithelium in the gastrointestinal tract, colonization of the new bacteria make the people to have some sort of diarrhea. But some, some of the chemotherapeutic agents cause severe constipation because they cause autonomic neuropathy, especially the vinca alkaloids. Usually, there is a loss of appetite, all of these things chemotherapy, psychological element, gastric upset, stomach, uh, oral ulcers, so that the patient usually they don't have a good appetite. And cerebrizingly, the patients on chemotherapy, they add weight, because all the time they, they have sedentary life, they don't have exercises, they, they eat more in order to uh, compensate for the losses, the people take a lot of fruits, honey, and so on, in order to improve their immunity. So, and the people sometimes significant uh, doses of corticosteroids as, as anti-emetic uh, probably participate in weight gain of those people. So that with chemotherapy, usually there is no weight loss, but there is a weight gain. So, as we said, we have to warn the patient that they have postmenopausal. Uh, they, they will go into menopause. Most of the ladies above the age of 35, the chance for their menses to come back is minimal. But before that age, there is a chance for them to, to resume the ovarian function. But it's very important to tell the people uh, about this, and especially if they are planning to bring kids. One of the options for, uh, in females is to take over, okay? And one of the Bizarre. options uh, for male having testicular tumors is to take sperm and to put in the back. And sometimes they make an embryo, a frozen embryo, and they will bring him back to the life the way they want, the time they want. Okay, thank you. Shukran.